Hey everyone, so, oh my gosh, I look disgusting, um, cause it's my one day, weekday that I have no school, so I'm taking advantage of these Fridays, and this is probably when I'll be doing my recaps from now on, but, so I look like a bum, and I just don't even care at this point, so, um, this is my recap for Glee, season 4, episode 13, Diva. Um, this episode was all over the place, like, it was probably the most stressful episode that it's been for a while and because of all that Tina stuff I felt like it was blamed on alcohol 2.0 like it was it was crazy so I wrote this stuff down this week because there was quite a lot so um I love the Hummelberry scenes because get it Kurt finally the truth comes out truth time and I just I'm so happy that Kurt put her in her place in this whole episode until the end like that was stupid but I really love that he told her that he threw the Defying Gravity um, performance in season one continuity. Um, I thought that was great. I love her sexual tension. Babe. Like, I just felt like they were going to like do it right on the floor. But um, I just think, in my opinion, and I'll probably mention this again in this recap, but I don't think Rachel is that special, to be honest. I'm not a huge fan of her voice. And it's not that, but... I just think there's so many different, there's so many Rachels out there. Like, there are so many girl singers who have powerful voices and their tiny bodies. Like, you know, but there's no Kurt Hummel. Like, it's a very rare thing. Countertenors are very rare. You know, he has this crisp, beautiful voice and he can has a beautiful range. And I just think that you have Rachel here, but you have Kurt here, who is like 10 times more talented, in my opinion. So I, I'm so glad they finally pointed that out. Um... And he ain't throwing nothing this time. It's on, bitch. And Rachel's little minions are little fucking turds. I'm like, go suck a hot one. Gross. Like, you don't talk about or insult Kurt in front of a Kurt stand. You just don't. So, whew. I wanted to claw the screen. Um, so, I was just so happy that he was going to show off her skills. He was, he was going to show off his skills to everyone and be like, bitch, please. And he looks so good this whole... He looks so good at, like, all the time. But he's fitting really well into those outfits. Like, the one with the vest... Ooh, yeah, yeah, that was good. So amazing. Um, the diva performance itself, well, because we got it like on Friday, so it wasn't anything new, but Blaine is hot as fuck. I think that was probably the hottest he's ever looked. Like, because he had, you know, the curls in his hair and then like the red leather jacket and the furry boa thing jacket. And that was just, ooh, he was looking fine as fuck. I don't think Blaine is a diva, but I think he was doing it to show that there are male divas not saying he was a male diva because i just don't see him as being a diva you know like all the other ones but i think he's just showing representing guys in general for that and his low back low background voice uh vocals in the song i was panting i'm like oh my god blaine Whew. and I, I think britney's outfit was my favorite i really like the pink and like the gold and silvery kind of stuff it looked like a cupcake i just really liked it i liked her hair too i'm really liking britney more too i've i expressed that I don't like her in the past but I've, I feel like I'm just liking her more I like I love Britannia don't get me wrong but I love them more as friends because Brittany isn't as annoying like when she was in season three so maybe that's it I don't know um maybe just because we aren't getting that many Britney things lately I don't think I haven't really noticed I have Kurt and Blaine vision sorry <laughs> um Tina is psycho Blaine is so cute and he's sick and oh poor little baby but he wasn't as sick when he did Don't Stop Me Now. Blaine and Leather, Lost Village Person, that was Jama's words. <laughs> Go watch the behind the scenes of the episode. She'll say, oh my god, I love her. And he was just rocking the fuck out, rocking that cock out. And I think he did a really great job. He was very theatrical. Playing the piano, dancing around, you know, while he's still kind of sick. So that takes some skill. I just, um, I'm loving Blaine more. And I think that he's just so adorable and um, very much talented. So I didn't know the song because I don't really know Queen. Like, like I said, probably billion times my mom never showed or expressed her musical interest so I don't know that many things from the past I'm sorry okay Santana is back hot cheerleader yeah. oh man not but city limits I just think all her songs this week blew everyone out of the water um they were amazing like Naya just probably my favorite female voice of the whole uh show she's just so good I just man she's got a new girlfriend apparently lies Santana lies but her girlfriend was hot, her fake one. I just can't wait for her to have a girlfriend and, you know, just move on for a while. Like, I think even Naya said that. They, like, moving on from their life, doing their own thing, and then maybe they'll always have that flame. I think she said that in the last behind the scenes as well. 
And I just don't know why Santana was so mad at Britney not telling her that she was dating Sam. Like, it wasn't her right. She wasn't obligated to do it. I just don't know why she would get mad at her for that. Like, Santana broke up with her, so it's not really her business. Uh, unless they're, like, still BFFs, you know, like this, you know. Um, but I just didn't know why she was so fucking mad about that. And Make No Mistake was probably the song I listened to the most this week. I just think Sam and Santana's voices were so amazing. I loved them both, and I didn't care about the backstory. I didn't care what the song was about. I just thought it was really pretty, and they're just, they both love Britney so much, and I just, I can't sympathize for Santana, the one she broke up with Britney. Like, if Britney broke up with her, or they just didn't work out, like, then, and she wanted her back in that way, just, I couldn't, but the duet was beautiful, so... I don't know, but I do love Brentana. Just I think that she's happy with Sam right now, so let's just let it be. I, you know, I don't really ship Sam and Brittany because I just feel like they're just, eh. But you know, I'm happy for them if they're happy. Um, Blaine, don't invite Tina to your house into your bedroom. What are you doing? Yes, Tina, call Mike right now. Do it, you crazy girl. And poor Blaine, you know, he's sick, he's tired, and here's Tina crawling her ass on top of him, sexually assaulting him, pretty much. Um, and what I want to point out is that guys can be sexually assaulted, too, by girls. They think, oh yeah, because guys want it, but no. I just think that sometimes women are kind of sexist in that way because guys can't have the equal amount. Like, guys can still be sexually assaulted and molested. And here's a perfect example. Like, Blaine, who obviously, if he was conscious, would not want this. And even unconscious, he probably obviously doesn't want this. He's sleeping. He's probably thinking of boys while he's sleeping. I don't understand how this isn't the same thing because it is. And I think that's what they're trying to... I don't know if they're trying to show that example, the writers, that was their intentions, but oh my gosh, I was like, this is so fucking uncomfortable, it's like somnophilia, like, you know, not willing sound. this is like, this is sexual assault, it could have been rape if, like, she went too far, I, and I would have felt bad for her, I really would have, if she didn't go that far, I would, you know, she's lonely, she's sad, she doesn't have anyone, nobody respects her talents, and except for Blaine, who's this really nice guy, but... You can't do that. You can't just crawl on top of someone and rub and vapor on them. And Blaine is just so oblivious. Like, he doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't think that Tina still has a crush on him. You know, it's Blaine. So, <laughs> um, it's just, this whole thing is so ridiculous. I would just feel so bad for her if she wasn't, like, this crazy-ass motherfucker. I just, I don't get it. And I know that some people are saying that Blaine was giving mixed signals. You know, he was being so nice to her. The nickname, so nice and friendly. The only person that really was listening to her and caring. And, you know, giving her this candy flower and asking her to be his date for uh, Will and Emma's wedding. And he just thinks it's his best friends. And he, she... She doesn't, you know, she thinks, oh, I still have a chance, but the biggest clue of all is he's gay. She kept saying, she she asked if he ever dated a girl, and he's like, no, I love women, but never in that way. I'm never going to be romantically involved with women, and sometimes, yes, yeah, sexuality is fluid, but when you know, you just know. He knows he's a perfect gold star gay, and that's all it's going to be. And I just don't understand why Tina cannot respect that. And I just think it's creepy, and when she's on top of him sleeping, it's just so borderline psychotic, and it's just so... They ruined Tina, and I just don't think they'll ever be able to go back from that. So I just think that even in... After Hung Up, that was probably her best performance ever, and at the end with the leather jacket, like, she's hot. She can have any guy she wanted easily. Why isn't she for going for someone that would actually want her and could actually be interested in her than someone that she'll never be able to have in that way? I just don't know why they're doing that. Like, she could date Ryder or something. I know it's good for storyline or whatever, but it's so stupid, and I just never been more angry at Glee for something. It just, it's so offensive because they're trying to make Blaine something he's not and they're making Tina like this bitch who doesn't know how to listen. It's just, it's stupid and I don't think I'll ever understand it. But uh, on to more Hummelberry happier things. Kurt brought it on home. He was fucking amazing. He won the contest. You know, I just knew he was going to win even before listening to the songs, even after listening to the songs, you know, his just had so much more than Rachel's and will always have more than Rachel's. It just, I'm biased, but you know, I just think that he's so much more special and talented. I just, I think maybe some people will disagree. 
but don't come into me talking about it because we'll always have different opinions. No one's going to have the same exact opinion. So, um, Rachel is good. She is special, but she is not the only person in the world that is like her. You know, I just don't know why they always have to have that message. I know they're trying to give confidence, but it's going to her head and it's a little too much. And, right, and New York has changed her in so many ways and I don't think in a good way at all. And I just, I want, I was so happy that somebody put her in her place. And I think something I pointed out from somebody said on Tumblr is, Rachel always has to have dramatics and theatrics and always, you know, this weird facial expressions and the hands and the, oh, you know, but Kurt doesn't need that. He just has his voice and that's how he won. And that's how, you know, he is so amazing. He just has his voice and that's all he needed to win. And I also loved that when he won, he just laughed a little bit and he was like modest. Um, they're little clapping hands and even the little trolls went onto his side. And also Adam was there for him. I also love when Kurt defended the Adam's apples and putting the talentless, talentless uh, fake minions in their place. You know, don't be trying to be all besties with me now, fucking ugly ass bitches. And Kurt Hummel rules the world and all of you and he is fabulous. Also, Adam looks really fucking hot this week. I mean, he looked good in the last episode he was in, but oh my gosh, hunky, hunky, hunky. Oh man, Ooh, he should just stay forever. Adam was impressed. I was impressed. Now go make out. Okay. <laughs> And finally, Tina won something. Good, now you can stop being a fucking psycho. But nope. Blaine had to ask her to the wedding. Why would you do this? And I just don't, I will never understand why Blaine always has to apologize for Tina's embarrassing herself. Like, I just don't, why that makes sense. Like, it, it's not his fault at all that. I just don't get it. I know he doesn't comprehend what's going on. But he's told, told her millions of times he is gay. That's the biggest clue and signal in the fucking world. It oblivious, it just erases every other clue that she thinks is in her head. That's the focus you should be focusing on because that is the facts. You cannot convert somebody if they're bisexual maybe or pansexual or, you know, just go with the flow. But if you are gay and you know it... And he is still hung up on Kurt. He had freaking whole shrine in his bedroom of him and Kurt. Like, oh man, I don't understand. I don't understand. But And same goes for Kurt apologizing to Rachel. Like, all of a sudden, he's kissing her ass. You know, the world, world does not revolve around Rachel Berry. And I just don't like her anymore. And I think her and Tina should just go live together and be stupid. And they both obviously want to convert gay men. The same gay man, poor Blaine. And I'm just kind of done with Humbleberry right now. Like, I think maybe I could in the future like him again. But right now, I'm just like, I don't fucking care. So, whatever. Fema, um, Finn and Emma, I kind of ship it. I'm going to be honest with you. I think that Will is an asshole. And I just don't like them at Will and Emma anymore. And I'm just don't want them to get married and I just think that she deserves so much better and Will and Finn was there for her and um I really like their moments and he looks like a teacher I think he should just stay as the New Directions captain or whatever teacher for uh, forever I just don't see why Will needs to be there anymore like go away forever I don't care and we know that Finn only kissed Emma because he wanted to calm her down like he always did for Rachel and he misses her a lot he's lonely he's heartbroken and I just want them to get back together because I'm just not a fan of Brody much at all anymore. He's just changing her in not the best ways at all. And um, the last Britannia scene was awesome. I love their dynamic and their friendship so much. I'm just happy that Brittany encouraged her to be the star that she is. And girl, uh, the girl, what is that called? Girl on Fire was fucking amazing. This girl is on fire. Fire, not fire. <laughs> um, and Santana was finally in New York and she's doing her thing. And then... Kurt Cheltan, as I say it, Kurt, Rachel, Santana, roomies now, I'm moving in, I don't care what you say, I don't even, I might even tell you ahead of time, I am just moving in, and I just love that about her, and I just can't wait for their dynamic and friendship, I can't wait for Santana to always put uh, Rachel in her place, and I just want Kurt and Santana to be best friends, like, I just think they would work so well together, and I just, I cannot wait, this is probably one of the best things they've done this season. It's going to be perfect. I just love that they're all together because they're, I love Santana. She's one of my favorite characters and she's my favorite girl character. So I am very, very excited. Next week. Oh, wait. Oh, by the way, I want to give this episode maybe a six or seven. It wasn't that bad. And the songs were really good this week. Like, all the songs were fucking good. But the freaking storyline was stressful as hell. The Kurt Rachel, Blaine Tina shit was freaking driving me up the wall. So, yeah. 
But next week is going to be so fucking amazing. Oh my god, clean, clean, clean. My claim fields are back. I do love Kurt and Adam. Catam is what they call him, but I love Clean, okay, and I, I love to multi ship, but I am just floating on Clean Island right now. You know, I'm really excited for what's gonna happen. I don't want to spoil anything because I don't know if everyone knows spoilers because I don't do them in videos anymore. But either way, I'm excited, I'm ecstatic, and I just can't wait. And I just, oh my god, it's gonna be so good. Can this like fast forward already, like to Thursday again? The one thing I don't like is I have two papers due that day, and I have class until like. 645 so I don't get home until like 730 um so bummer but I always never met I never miss glee hopefully so um yeah I will talk to you guys later and see y'all for I do next week I do okay I'm done <laughs> okay bye